welcome to my channel. I'm the Savvy Daughter and I've got a big project to get to work on in my garden. I have two brand new, really good sized raised beds and I need to fill them up. And I'm going to be trying to do everything I can to fill up my raised beds in an affordable way and do it well. I think it's going to be good. I've got a big pile of stuff already in front of me that is just the beginning of what it's going to take to fill up these raised beds. It's going to take around five cubic yards of material. I need a lot of material. It's going to be quite a project and I'm ready to get started. So come along with me and let's get started today. We're going to set up a couple of raised beds to grow good stuff in the future. The first thing that we're going to be adding into my raised beds is going to be cardboard. Will you grab the cardboard, Dad? Yeah, sure. And Daddy's helping me work on this today because it's just we're moving around a lot of stuff and it's good that I have some help. This cardboard is the boxes that these raised beds came in. So I didn't buy the cardboard, didn't pay a penny for it. And basically I'm going to be dividing all of my material evenly between the two beds. So I may not show literally adding the material to every bed, but we've got about the same amount of cardboard going into each bed. I actually wish we had more cardboard because this is going to take a ridiculous amount of material. And, and it's worth mentioning that we tore all the tape and pulled some staples yeah. and all that out. So this is just clean cardboard. All the stuff that we'll rot down. And, and you could actually put quite a bit of cardboard in the bottom of these. It's just a good way to get rid of some stuff and uh, get rid of some trash in in an easy way. It's yeah. completely biodegradable. Especially so. with raised beds this tall, you can yes. probably have several inches of cardboard in the bottom. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of material to fill them, that's for sure. Yep. All right, the second piece of material I'm going to be adding to my raised bed is a couple of straw bales. I've got two straw bales per bed, and I paid $32 for these straw bales. So, so far I've got $32 worth of material going into my beds. Boom. I've got two hay bales put in each bed and I'm not going to spread them out. I'm going to just leave them exactly like they are. As I throw more material in, they'll probably get busted up a little bit. And over time, things like worms will do the whole decomposing process and it'll distribute all of my material throughout the bed. So I'm going to just leave the bales like they are. My next piece of material is wood blocks. And these wood blocks I got for free at a sawmill that's locally in my area. The sawmill just kind of gives away their scrap wood. So we were able to just go down to this sawmill and collect a bunch of these wooden blocks and they are a good thing that we're going to be using to fill up my raised beds. I've got a ton of them of all different sizes. It'll take a long time but they'll rot as well just like straw bales and they'll eventually just become good growing dirt. So we're throwing wood chunks in these beds and you know it just makes a great filler and you know, it'll decompose and rot. It'll also hold some moisture, but you know, this is a good way to get rid of old firewood. If you've got rotten old firewood, if you've got woods near your house with just deadfall on the ground, you can find logs, break them up, throw them in, get especially down in the bottom of this where you really need material just to take up the space. You know, no matter what you're going to grow in here, your growing is going to take place up here in the top and it's not that important what you're putting down in the bottom. Of course, you want it to be, you know, organic biodegradable material, but don't get overly worried about what you're putting down in here. So over time, yes, it will rot, it'll absorb water, it will, it will feed all the little critters that compost all of this and mix it all up, it'll do all of that. But this is a good way to just get rid of some wood. So that's what we're doing. The next thing I've got as far as material goes is all kinds of plant material. I've got buckets of clippings, of hydrangea clippings and Laura Petalum clippings and just all kinds of clippings. And you guys at your houses may have shrubs or something. You may have like shrub clippings. Pretty much everybody has access to some sort of clippings. You can also use a certain amount of grass clippings. You may not want to go crazy with those, but you can use a good amount of grass clippings, especially if you've got a big area to fill up. So let's go ahead and dump these in there. There we go, and I've got several more buckets of clippings just like this. And then we're gonna get moving on to kind of the last piece of material, which is gonna be more soil coming off of dead plants. <laughs> 
And then the last main piece of material that I'm going to be using to fill up my raised bed is potting soil. And there's just dead plants in all of these pots. Now my family owns a nursery, so that's the reason I have all of these dead plants and that's the main bulk of what I'm using to fill up my raised beds. You guys probably don't have like massive quantities of dead plants laying around to fill up raised beds with, but you might have something else. Wood chips are a really common thing that people use to fill up raised beds, especially if they're not planning on using the beds immediately. It's like the middle of June right now and I'm not trying to use these raised beds until at least next year. I don't know exactly how long all of this stuff is going to take to break down into a usable soil. It may take two years, but my point is I have like I'm I'm doing this not to use it immediately, but to use it in the future. And because of that, I can use all kinds of stuff that's not broken down, but will break down and I won't have to spend as much money on it. So y'all just need to use whatever you have. I have a ton of dead plants. You may have to get creative. You may have to collect a whole lot of dead leaves or something to fill up more of your bed. I'm not sure, but the whole point is get creative and use what you have and generally you can figure out how to fill up one of these beds without spending very much money at all. So here goes a lot of soil and a dead plant. And this is how far we've gotten with the pile that I started with at the beginning. That pile is completely gone now. And if you took a pitchfork and shook all this stuff down, uh, my dad's saying it probably wouldn't even be halfway full or really even close. So we got a long way to go for the pile being gone, we're gonna have to go get a bunch more material and come back. We'll have some more dead plants and keep going. We have replenished our pile, so now it's time to get all of these pots dumped into my beds and then it's just gonna be see where we are and see what we need to do after this. Here's where we're at after adding in all sorts of dead plants. Three loads of them, I believe. It's looking legitimate. We're getting somewhere. And now what we've got left is about 100 dead gardenia bushes. So we're gonna add those and then we're gonna be done. It's been a few days since I filmed the first portion of this video, but now I have dumped all of the gardenias in my two raised beds, and this is where they're at. They're not 100% full, and I realize that, and they're gonna just get more and more compact as time goes on, so they'll end up becoming less full instead of more full as time goes on. But in a little bit, you know, a few months down the road or whatever, I'll just have to add more material and make sure that I fill them up, but that's just not gonna happen right this second. So what I want to do to end this video and the reason that I had to wait a few days to finish filming this video is I have a secret ingredient that I'm about to add to one of my raised beds and I want to show y'all what that is. A thousand worms. I bought a thousand worms and I'm going to put all of them into this raised bed, not the one behind me. I just want to put them in here because I want to see the difference between how this raised bed does and how that one does. The way I'm going to do this is I've made a couple of depressions in the middle of this bed and the depressions go down basically to where the hay is, like the straw is right underneath where these holes are. I'm going to take my worms, divide them in half, put half of them in this depression, half of them in that one, and then I'm going to cover them up up with these two pieces of wood that I've got in front of me. This is going to help keep them damp and cool and all of that because it's 95 degrees, the sun is super bright, and if I don't keep them damp and cool they're all just going to die. So I've wet my depressions very well and it should give the worms plenty of time to just go down into the raised bed and disperse themselves before they dry out or anything like that. cover my worms I'm just going to dampen them a little bit with my watering can. I don't think it'll hurt anything and I just really want to make sure that they live and do well especially since it's so hot outside and I'll just be really interested to see how this experiment turns out. I want to be able to dig in this raised bed in a few months or a year or however long and see the difference between this one and that one which has no worms in it. My worms are real skinny right now but as they eat stuff they're going to grow get thicker and I just want to see what a difference it makes between my two identical raised beds. So. 
that's why I wanted to do this experiment. And that is the end of me filling my raised beds, at least for right now. I realize that they'll need more attention in the future, but for today, I'm done. I'm ready to see how my worms do and how what everything I put in here does. I want to see what kind of soil it makes in the future. I hope that this video helped you guys think about how you can fill your own raised beds with stuff that you already have. You don't have to spend a lot of money to fill up a raised bed. You can and that's a good way to do it. That's a fine way to do it. But you absolutely don't have to. You can fill large raised beds with what you have. And that's why I wanted to make this video just to kind of show y'all how I filled up my raised beds without spending spending very much money at all just using stuff that I have and I hope that it gave you guys some ideas of what you might be able to use to fill your own raised beds. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.